Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. My guest today has two areas of expertise that I was interested in sharing with you. The first is that she has taken her side hustle interior design business full-time, leaving the security of her corporate job. And the second is that she actively engages in the business mentor and mentee relationship. If you're not sure but you think you know who I'm describing. Let's see if you're right. I'm talking about Cheryl Luckett, the principal of Dwell by Cheryl. So you may be thinking, why is all this familiar? Well, if you're a loyal listener, you heard the show a couple of months ago with Rashida Gray from Gray Space Interiors. And she is also someone who has a full-time corporate job and working very hard on the side to build her interior design business. And she described how she has a mentor that's been helping her do that. And Cheryl is that mentor. So of course, I had to, you know, round all the ponies around and put the circle together for us because I wanted to hear from her too. (laughs) Now, before I introduce her to you, though, let me tell you a little bit about her firm. Southern Home described her as her firm as opulence in reach with vintage treasures and ingenious restyles. Cheryl believes her clients should dwell in a home they love. She describes her design as sophisticated but approachable. She launched in 2012, and she continues to grow with clients raving about her ability to transform a space on a realistic budget. It's also her professionalism and attention to detail that earn her high praise. Cheryl will talk to us in the interview about how she worked for 15 years at a Fortune Fortune 500 company, and she was initially a registered dietitian and then a human resources professional. It was here that she developed her service skills and her business acumen. And I'll just remind you of episode six, where Erica Ward told us, make sure that you think about and you utilize your transferable skills when you open your interior design firm. We're going to hear how Cheryl did exactly that. Now, Cheryl's work has been published in Charlotte Home and Garden, Southern Home, The Charlotte Observer, Queen City Exclusive, and Hoffman Media's Southern Spaces, to name just a few. She is a five-time recipient of Best of House Award for Design and Customer Satisfaction, and in 2015, she was named one of the 15 Best Designers in Charlotte by Build Direct. Cheryl also believes in giving back, and she has partnered locally with agencies such as Goodwill of the Southern Piedmont and Metrolina Habitat Restores to promote the nonprofit retailers and their missions. Now, before we start with our episode, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Kravit, featuring CuratedKravit.com. CuratedKravit.com is your go-to site for all things fabulous for your interior design projects, from affordable accessories to complete a coffee table or a side table vignette, all the way to dramatic lighting needed for a show-stopping dining room. Design click delivered at curatedkravit.com. Use the code CKPODCAST for 10% off your first order. Okay, let's meet Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl, thank you so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Thank you so much for having me, Luann. Oh, this is going to be fun. We have so many little connections here, and um, this is like becoming, it's just a really cool thing. I say it whenever I do an in-person appearance with people and I have a panel discussion or an address that I'm giving that I always say, look, you guys hear me complain about all the work that social media creates in our business lives and that all of you that are not in business since the dawn of the caveman like I am, you don't understand what it was like to just go to work and do your work and come home, okay? But this is the part of social media that I truly do value. You and I met at Design Bloggers Conference last year in uh, 2017 in L.A. And the funny thing is, do you remember that how it actually was? I don't know if you remember. Um, I'm going to just share this with you. Okay. Because... um, 
oh my God, now I'm going to go blank on her name, was giving the keynote address that has an S. I'm getting an S and a K. I'm so horrible. Stacy. Yes. Okay. See, Stacy Kunstel, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. See, I get letters. I, I, I People <laughs> like, that's so funny. Everybody's like, you get visions. I'm like, I get visions for things that I see that are going to happen to my life. And I get letters when I'm trying to remember something. And I'm oh, almost right. always right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So, but anyway, so Stacy was up and she was giving the, I think it was the morning welcome yep. address after Adam, right? And she mentioned you in the address. She and did. what was funny was we, our panel was up right after that. And when I was giving my part of my presentation, it, it tied in directly with what she had just said about you. So I impromptu looked at you and called mm -hmm. you into my presentation. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I know. I do. That was so cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, and then of course, and then the rest is history with social media because now we're yep. just besties forever, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Love it. Right, right. So now, how much to my surprise, though, when I'm interviewing Rashida Gray of Gray Space Interior Design in episode 267, and she starts talking about her mentor, and it's you. And I'm just like, wait a minute. This yep. is it's crazy. It's such a small community. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you guys aren't anywhere from the same part of the country. You nope. and I aren't from the same nope. part of the country. We meet in another part of the country that neither one of us are from. It's just. Right. It's, right. It's, it's it, that's that I have to say. I really do really love that part of social media. So yep. anyway, so we knew that we had to eventually do this interview. And then that put the fire under my butt because you have two really great things that I think are going to be powerful to share with your peers today, Cheryl. One is that you have engaged in this mentee relationship, mentor-mentee relationship with, with Rashida. Right. And um, the other is that you design for you was a side hustle and <laughs> yes and so and so that has some insights that we'll be looking to hear but that you also at the end of 2016 starting with 2017 made the leap and went out and did design full time so i'm yep. interested to pull that apart too so Great. which do you prefer to talk about first because i'm loving both of them it's your world. I'm just living it. <laughs> You're so funny. That's awesome. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's talk about let's talk about your personal business experience first because okay. that'll probably affect the and um, inform the conversation regarding Rashida. So, okay. So, tell us a little bit about your insights on running an interior design firm while being in a full time corporate job. Give us some of the. The, the ways that you made it work, the challenges, you know, yep. talking to the people who are in those shoes now and giving them a little tips and inspiration. Right. So I am actually a registered dietitian by trade. It's actually a credential that I still hold. What is interesting about my background, however, is that my degree is in family and consumer science, which most people traditionally know as the old school version, <laughs> the new school version of home economics. <laughs> so um, home ec, if you recall, if you're old enough to recall back to when home <laughs> ec was a thing, it includes several disciplines. So interior design is one of those disciplines, um, nutrition, childhood education, fashion merchandising. Well, in college, I actually actually took the route to become a dietitian. So my degree is in nutrition. So um, I graduated, started working for a, a large company in food service management, uh, Fortune 500. I worked as a, a registered dietitian in the segment of our business that contracted school food service. So I was essentially the person planning school menus, being the voice of school lunch. Um, I did that for about 10 years and I started to kind of wonder what's next for me. I work at this large com company, there's lots of opportunity. People were asking me, you know, what do you wanna do next? So I, I came to a point where I'm like, okay, what do I wanna be when I grow up? Mm. Do I wanna climb this corporate ladder because opportunities are being presented or do I want to do something different? Mm. At that point, I was traveling a lot. Um, I didn't really have much of a social life outside of work. And I had this, um, I had purchased my first home and I started to decorate it. Mm. And I developed kind of a love 
for design. And I think it goes much further back than that, but I started to recognize my Mm. love for design and home decor. And so um, I took a position in HR um, as an opportunity opened up and it allowed me some greater flexibility in my personal life, a little bit more time. So with that, that new position, I said, let me explore this design thing. I think I'll sign up for a class at the junior college. And that's where it all began. So um, I know that's kind of kind of a long story. No, but, yeah. Um, so I started taking a class at the local community college in design. Um, it was basic drafting. And I fell in love with it. Mm. And uh, one of my classmates said, you know what, you should write a blog. <laughs> and I thought, really? And so um, I took her advice and I said, you know, I think I will. I'm decorating my home. I'm doing these DIY projects. Why not? So that meant I needed a name. I needed a domain. I wanted it to look nice. So I hired a blog designer. Before I knew it, I had a business, wow. a small, a very small business. Right. But, you know, I, I had legitimate paperwork. And I said, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it right. Well, let me print some business cards. And I started blogging and people in my community, church, uh, friends started to say, hey, well, I got this project at my house. Can you help me out with it? You know, how much do you charge? It, I didn't You're like, I don't charge anything. I'm not a designer yet. <laughs> I'm just blogging. <laughs> in to start a business, but I kind of fell into it. And so I, I finished the first class and I said, well, I'm going to take what's the next class. I'll take the next class. Before you know it, I was full fledged in a design program at the community college, going at night, working full time and building a business on the side. Wow. Yes. So I was doing all that, but I Honestly, I've never really treated it as if it were my side hustle. Okay. I think very early on, I realized, okay, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it right. So I'm not going to piddle around. I'm, I want to be all in, mm-hmm. even though I'm not necessarily all in. Right, at this right, point. right. So I remember one of the first blogs that I read was Toby Fairley's blog. She's phenomenal. Yes. Still love her. Um, and she mentioned this design bloggers conference the first year I was in business. It was 2012. And I thought, I said to myself, next year I'm going to that. I don't know much about it, but Toby said it was good. <laughs> so I need to explore it and I, I'm going to go next year. So literally my second year in business, I flew to LA by myself to attend my first design bloggers conference. And that changed everything. Wow. Um, I think for the first time sitting in that audience, I realized this is where I'm supposed to be. It was almost a spiritual experience wow. because I felt like I was finally with my people. You were in the a- church of interior design. <laughs> <laughs> and I was baptized. <laughs> So um, after years of going to conferences with dietitians and just not feeling, the, you know, the thing, not my the, people. Yes, I'm <laughs> my people. So at that conference, I I fell in love, and I I think at that point I knew, okay, we we got we need an exit strategy. Okay. And so that's where I began really focusing on, all right, how, how am I going to make this transition? Because I'm living a completely different life from what now I see is my future. Right, 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 right. Okay. I love it. I have questions. You know, I have questions in there. (laughs) So the first thing that I just want to say, I can relate to what you said when you said from the beginning, you handled it like a business that from an emotional and um, a professional standpoint that you were all in, even even though you were not all in seven days a week, you know, five, you know what I mean? Because it's the same way as what I did with the podcast. It's clearly not the 60 hour a week part of my week, but it's, you know, the 35, 40 hour part of my week. Um, And it's always been from the beginning, this, you know, if it doesn't turn into the big, amazing business that I intended to be, it won't Mm -hmm. be because I didn't start it that way to be that. Right. right? So I understand that. Do it right from the beginning. And if it happens and it grows, it's good. Good for you. I love that. Okay. And then the other thing is I just wanted to go back to, you described how 
you're doing the blog and little by little people in your community, mm-hmm. your church, your friends are seeing, they're asking you to design and decorate for them because they're aware of your blog. Mm-hmm. I have to tell you how many times, you know, I, myself included, you know, you feel like you're writing this blog and nobody's out there mm-hmm. listening and nobody knows it. And so I have gotten to the point where I'm just content to have it there from an SEO standpoint. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, and and I have said to designers that I've talked with, that I've coached, it's like, look, I know that it can find you business. I know that yes. it can. I've talked to too many of you that it has worked, okay? But yes. if it is not your wheelhouse, and if it's not your strength to mm-hmm. do it, then I always say that's not the first place to put, you know, five hours a week right. to create a blog, right? But right. so tell me... Are we talking about literally a blog that is read by your 20 friends and family and it just coincidentally, you know, didn't even necessarily get much bigger before those 20 people told 20 people and told 20 people about your services? Give us a little bit of that transition from putting it in the world into actually getting clients from it. Okay, so when I said I pretended like this was my was my real legit job yeah. before it really was, it meant that I invested. I invested in making yeah. it as as good as I could make it at that at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a really nice blog design. I I would do a professional photo shoot at my house. Okay. <laughs> I okay. mean, literally, I, before I had a project, I had a photo shoot at my house, and okay. I took the pictures of every nook and cranny in here, okay. and you know, I put them on the blog, and it made this. It had had this perception that I was probably doing a little bit more than I actually was, but it drew people in. And so I remember doing a blog launch. I I like pomp and circumstance. (laughs) (laughs) I remember, you know, having a countdown on the site and I told everybody I knew I sent invitations to people to log on on January 1st, 2012. And so they started to anticipate when the next blog post would come. And I don't have a huge reader. Yeah. But at that point, I had the right readership. And all it took was for those people that I knew to read the blog. And then before you know it, I was at church and people were saying, hey, are you reading Cheryl's blog? It's really good. You should sign up for it. Isn't and it just, it's, it just spread. That's amazing. I mean, and I'm going to tell you what it what it is, is, is that you were intentional about it and that you created a buzz about it. And as opposed to just writing a blog and hitting send and putting it into the stratosphere, you know, the the launch and everything else. I mean, I remember Claire Jeffords episode when she was on the show, she this she talked about how when she opened her interior design firm that she had um, a little pamphlet or something made up and she literally went around around and put it in the mailboxes of everybody in all the streets and neighborhoods around her and went yep. called all the realtors and said I'm an interior designer this is what I do and if I could help you or your friends let me know and so the concept I've never heard of anybody doing it with the blog and that's an yeah. awesome concept so you you created this little buzz you created this thing mm-hmm. you you sent out notices invitations mm-hmm. told mm-hmm. people it was going to come and they yep. should look for it Yep. That's awesome. I love it. And I have had designers email me. Colleen Prim emailed me once many, many months ago, and she said, what do designers do when they don't have work to photograph? And you just did vignettes, oh, nooks yeah. and crannies all over Absolutely. your house. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yep. We've had other designers say that, too. I sometimes think the new designers don't believe it. I have to oh, say. Oh, it's so true. No. There's there's a million things in your own home that you could probably, you know, stage, photograph, and would be valuable to a certain, mm-hmm. you know, group of people. Yeah. Well, I see the, the, the vignette, the stage photographs of like, you know, you can get three shots out of one kitchen counter with the way you guys are so creative and yeah, setting up absolutely. the lemons and the flowers and everything else you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you yeah. know, so, so it's true. And so, and, but, but what you said, you did just what I did with the podcast. You put dollar bills behind it. So yeah. you did it professionally. Like I have professional and editing, I, you have professional I, photography and you didn't right. take it, you know, okay. Okay. Because I, I had, because I had another job and I really honestly think that's an advantage. Mm. I was able to go to the design bloggers <laughs> conference across the country because I had a job that could fund it. That's right. So instead of waiting until I was, I was 
doing it full time, I said, well, let me make this, let me take a couple of vacation days Mm. and go invest in what I'm trying to build on the side. Right. Because you can right now. You're not, you know, you're not worried about income or, you know, making the ends meet or starting the new venture. You, you have something that can support those. Exactly. Exactly. And when we talk about the readership at the beginning of the blog, and I don't know if you remember the numbers, um, but it, it, it's no different than like, like, that's why it brought to mind what Claire Jeffer did. It's really, if there's 20 people that are reading it, that's 20 people that could potentially tell 20 other people each. Right. 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 So it, it really isn't that you need. And so the difference in when designers have said to me, uh, the blog doesn't work. I never get any clients from the blog. The difference is that one is just sitting there waiting for the world to come to it, but you mm-hmm. brought it to your community. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, like- and honestly, probably one of my first 20 <laughs> readers became a client. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. you know, there's 20 people. While you might say it's only 20 people, right. that that one of those 20, I decorated her entire house. Right, right. Well, I always say, I mean, from day one, when I've always done sales in whatever position I've been in, whether it's window works or other positions, I'm looking for one yes out of 25 cold prospects. One right. yes. So that yes, means I'm going to hear no 24 times. Mm-hmm. But that's cool because you know what? Like you said, one yes is a whole house. Yes. You know, yes. so, or one yes is one little bedroom, but her girlfriend needs a whole house. Right. Right. <laughs> so, and, and that one bedroom becomes more photos. That's right. Oh, yes. Right. Exactly Which attracts right. people who have other people who need bedrooms. Exactly. Okay. So I love it. So designers listening, if you have a talent and a skill and an interest in blogging, then yes, use it as a marketing arm, but don't just put it out to the internet and hope that they will come, you know, create some buzz about it and, and share it and act actively tell everybody that you know that you have a blog and why don't you tell your friends about it that's the whole thing we have to be yeah. our best own yeah. advocate yeah. if we can't advocate for ourselves what why do we think anybody else would right 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 yeah so but i think it's i mean look you come to it with experience you're a grown woman with you know mm-hmm. 10 or 15 years of corporate experience so mm-hmm. you're not over processing, you know, what if I do this and it doesn't work? It's like, this is what we do. If it doesn't work, we move on. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 And well, it's a, t- exactly. it's a, it's a tough lesson. It's a hard lesson. And until you've been through it and realized that, you know, the worst thing that happened is, is it didn't work. And I tried something else. Right. Oh, oh well, <laughs> you know, On that's really, next. yeah, that's not really that horrible. You know, the world didn't <laughs> end. I'm still sitting here. So, okay. All right. So I like that. I like that a lot. So, um, now I don't know, is your blog a blog that now has grown to be thousands or tens of thousands of followers, or is it still just a a rather small community of loyal people. Where are you at with that? That's so interesting. So when I started um, the blog, I was blogging about three times per week, Whoa. Uh, which is a lot. Yeah. Well, as, the, as my business grew and the demand increased, that became something I no longer had a lot of time right, for. Right. So I could, I remember writing a blog post called, we need to talk. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was essentially me telling my readership that I cannot continue this pace any longer. Thankfully, um, you know, yes. you guys are right. all hiring me and now. <laughs> right, right. So it's a good thing. Yeah. But so I cut back to once a week and now I'm probably doing real good if I can get out to a month. Okay. Um, so it, it's just the, my focus has shifted. Mm -hmm. And so the blog, I do like, I still like to blog. I still like to put my projects out on the blog and give details behind the scenes information. Um, But I don't, I don't use it so much as a vehicle to capture clientele Mm -hmm. uh, any Mm -hmm. longer, but that is where I started. Um, And I, I like, I I still find value in it, Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily a driver for business for me. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, the thing is, I think the key is that it sounds like that you're a skilled writer and you enjoy the process of yeah. telling the process. Right. See, that's the key right there. I've had designers that I've that have asked me, oh, you know, I really, I can't stand doing, I don't want to do it, but everybody says I have to do it. I'm like, stop right there. As soon as you said, I yeah. can't stand doing it, there's 10 then other ways to market yeah. your business. Don't right. even putz Absolutely. with the thing that you can't stand doing. Like, Absolutely. that's just crazy pants to me. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. why? 
Why would right. I try and do that? And it's, your readers can tell you don't. You yeah, can say it. Right. you know, like, yeah. it's just mm-hmm. there's there's always another way to do it that will feel fun and energetic, and that you can't wait to sit down and do. And that's the thing that people will respond to. You know, absolutely. So awesome. All right, I love it. Okay, now. Tell me a little bit about the reality of juggling your full-time work as these clients start to come in. Are you just like, you know, doing seven days a week, doing consultations and sourcing on weekends, and now you're, you know, doing floor plans and invoicing at night? How is this working? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes, and yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, how and, do you do a podcast yeah, with a business? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and on top of that, I was also in school. So, oh, right. Um, yeah, right. I, it took me six years to finish the program I was in. It took me longer to do that junior college program than it did for me to get a bachelor's degree. Uh, but that's okay. I that's did that right. one for me. Right. And that's the right. knowledge was valuable. And you have it. It's no one. It's always there forever and ever. No one takes it away. Yeah. So the... Um, the balance was difficult. I, I am single, <laughs> so there's that, and I don't have any kids, so okay. I have a little bit more free time, but I will tell you that all of my free time was dedicated to building the business okay. outside of work. Um, I was really intentional about how I spent my time. Um, I can remember I love social media and have used it since the onset of my business, and I remember literally planning out every day, okay, I'm going to post this post before I go to work at lunch. I'm going to post this post and then I'll figure out what I'm going to post uh, after when I get home. But that was my sequence every day. And that allowed me to live in both worlds, even though I wasn't living in both worlds. So that helped to me to have a constant presence on social media, even though I was at work. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was very helpful about really thinking through how I'm utilizing my time. But consultations were in the evenings. Um, I did have to work weekends. Um, and I was very upfront with my clients about my job. I mean, you can't call me at three o'clock in the afternoon. I may be in a meeting. You know, my boss might be in my office. <laughs> like right. you, I, that, Those times are off limits. So do understand that I have, I have another job. Um, and they were, I think, in being... Uh, truthful with them, they were very understanding. If they needed someone who had who could provide a little bit more time, then I probably wasn't the right designer for them. Well, and that's a great point because almost anybody can understand something as long as it's specified and clarified and established at the beginning of the relationship. You know, right. because now if you say that's the, that's how the rules are and they call you at two o'clock and you don't answer when you call them back yep. at six o'clock, if they're all, you know, mad about it, it's like, right. hey, right. lady, we had an agreement, yes. whatever, yes. you know, yes. like you're, you're losing your mind over nothing here. So, okay. Right. And you're right. And the people that just would feel like, oh, you know, then they don't sign with you and that's okay. Mm-hmm. I also uh, managed my, my um, business, how much business I was taking on, which, <laughs> which, Consequently, created um, oh, a backlog of people and a demand. The <laughs> takeaway. <laughs> yes, you got it. So what I would do is I would because I mean literally I'm going to school. I'm working full time in you know in a it. pretty big job. Yes. Um, I'm doing this business on the side. I'm blogging two to three times a week. Oh I literally only took one project on at a time. And then I would say, okay, well, I'm currently working on someone. You can be next. essentially. Wow. And that snowballed. I mean, I would have like 10 to 15 people waiting on a list. And I, it got to the point where I would hate, I would be like, please say you don't want to be on the list. Please say you don't want to be on the list. <laughs> And I'd say, I'm so sorry. I'm really backed up. You know, I, I'm happy to add you to the list, but do understand that it will be, it, it will probably likely be spring or winter. And they're like, okay, add us to the list. <sighs> Wow. And do you, you really, I mean, I said the takeaway, that's a typical sales technique. Do you really think that that sometimes was part of the cachet that people were like, I got to wait for her? Well, everybody wants someone, something that other people want. That's and so, crazy. Yeah. I think that they were like, well, clearly if she's, you know, that backed up, we, we need to get in 
do. <laughs> now, how about the other side of that? Did you ever have the, the conversation with somebody and you said that and they tried to weasel it in and say, well, okay, but couldn't you just and wouldn't you please? And it's just one room or it's just I want you to pick pink yeah. colors. Because simple things like that. Like yeah. I can see I can see making the mistake in the beginning of saying, you know, okay, I can't take full projects two at a time, but mm-hmm. I could do a pain consultation on Saturday, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, sure, sure. So those those clients I would take on. You would, but, but most, see, now I yes. worry about, though, that I would worry about that if you said, okay, all right, you want a pain consultation, I'll do, do it on Saturday. Yeah. And then they're, you're in their house, they're like, and couldn't you just oh, start oh, no, the no, design? No. Like, you had to draw a line, right? <laughs> yes, you do. And I'm, I have no problem drawing lines. Right. So, so I think you have to know, you have to set those boundaries, and you have to stick with them. Right. And he, I mean, and my you sanity could st- depended on it at that point. Exactly. But you could say, look, I told you that I would come yes. and pick your yes. pain colors. Give me the yes. check. I'm leaving. I'll see you in eight weeks when you're on yes. the schedule for the full Absolutely. room. Okay. Absolutely. So, and, and that's, again, it's just making a clear agreement up front. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yes. I love it a lot. Okay. All right. And so, oh, one additional thing there yeah. on the, the balancing the workload. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized probably in year two that I needed some help. And because I was in school, <laughs> I knew that we needed an internship. Oh. Um, so I decided, you know what? I think I could get an intern. But I didn't want my interns to be my classmates because, right. again, I'm in school. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> but, I, but I'm one of the few people in my class who has, who has a business. Hmm. So I sought another design program locally. And I went and spoke with the program director. I told her, like, hey, I'm still, you know, in the process of learning, but um, I'm I busy, <laughs> extremely busy. I have an opportunity that would give some of your students hands on experience. Um, I'm not a credential designer at this point, um, but if you've got people that you think would be interested, I'd love to take them on. So I, she started funneling me interns. Isn't that something? And was so there a I, program where it was an actual exchange for credit or a, a relationship uh, between the two of you and the... Yeah. the... No, it was exchange for credit. Oh, and, so that's organized. You know, she had to, yeah, she had to sign off on kind of what the program was, mm-hmm. but um, that was extremely valuable because I had now some assistance. Right. Well, and there's a situation like Erica Ward in her episode with us. I think it was number six or nine. Was it six? (laughs) You know, that's funny. (laughs) But she talked about your transferable skills and there your experience in HR, I'm sure, was so valuable because here you are, you're accustomed to setting up agreements between employers and employees, in this case, designer and intern and, you know, having parameters and laying it out. So that's awesome. Right. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so that's cool. So now tell me a little bit about working with the trades with your full-time job. So your kitchen guy wants to do a measure on Tuesday at 11, not Sunday at 11. How did you Mm -hmm. do that? So early on, I had very small projects that were purely decorative. Okay. Um, You know, with the exception of maybe paint you know, cosmetic kind of things. We weren't doing renovation. Okay. So, so I think again, that was a, that was a boundary that I established pretty early on. Okay. I've got a lot going on. Am I able to take on those larger projects? And is that going to create more um, confusion? And is it going to be harder to manage for me? So I really stay, I focused and stayed in my lane and kind of built that demand and really didn't start to take on those larger projects until after I made my transition. And Cheryl, did you, did it, was it, what is it that the larger projects like that in the beginning were not coming to you? In other words, yes. you weren't attracting them or did you right. actually have to turn them down and say, I'm not ready for this yet, even however you worded um, it to them? I probably turned a few down, but I think I was attracting those people who needed help with home with decor. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, but in hindsight, if mm-hmm. you were, if you were talking to a mentee and they were mm-hmm. in your shoes and it was the beginning of their side hustling this thing, you might suggest if they are not really well versed already, like you were still going through your schooling yep. process and you right. really don't have the opportunity to oversee a reno or something, yep. you might yep. suggest that they just sort of, you know, just turn those away in the most respectful way and just 
just say, this isn't really something. I mean, it's easily understood. You could easily say to somebody, you don't want somebody has a full-time job overseeing yeah. this gut yeah. renovation because if the plumber, you know, cracks a pipe, where am I? I'm, 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 at, I'm in meeting. Right. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Well, okay. and perhaps other people might have, it, I think it depends on, yeah, on, they, the, on the person, their skill level and the the amount of flexibility that their they job has and also possibly the resources their husband could yeah. be their contractor or their father so then maybe that makes it a little bit easier for them to not be on site for things yeah so we can't right. imagine everyone's situation you're right yeah okay cool okay very cool all right so now talk to me about the criteria for in your mind what did you set up mm-hmm. as the criteria for literally leaving a full-time corporate position that was your previous career for not a minute and a half like 15 mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. that had to be a pretty scary decision and mm-hmm. I'm curious because I'm knowing you I know that it was well thought out and planned so what did you yeah. set up as criteria Cheryl Okay, so it took me a good two years to even be able to swallow the thought of leaving my good job. <laughs> right. I mean, it's salary benefits. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 15 years of tenure and all kinds of perks. And yeah. so I literally didn't, wouldn't even entertain it for two years. Okay. I mean, two years of doing the blog and doing people's bedrooms and, you know, decorative projects. I couldn't, I just couldn't take my mind there. And this, I'm still in school, but I'm, I'm not committed to the idea of making this leap. Okay. It wasn't until the beginning of year three okay. that um, I said to myself, okay, I think I, I really want to do this for a living. So like you're, like you're asking me, what will it take for me to make this leap? Right. Well, first I knew I had to make the decision. So I made the decision. It always starts and, with a decision. Yeah, always starts with a decision. So I, I mean, I seriously had to give a lot of thought to, is this what I'm going to do? So I made the decision and then I put a time frame on it. Because okay. I know me, I'm extremely goal oriented. I want to check it off the list. So I said, what is what is realistic for me to feel confident, to, for me to feel like I've got enough experience where I've established a brand presence, a demand, all of those things. And I I said, okay, thinking that through, I think 36 months from today. Okay, three years. Three years. So I literally gave it a title. I called it Project 36. It was like code for I'm I'm breaking out of this corporate jungle. I love it. I love (laughs) that. Project 36. So everything. So I really, before I determined what I needed to accomplish, I set the time frame. Because you. I knew I would, you could drag it out five, 10 years. Right. You could, yes, you're right. Oh, well, it seems like but yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to do it this year, but there's yes. a recession coming or I was right. going to do it this year and you know, we're real, I'm really busy at work or something. Right. right. Okay. So I said 36 months. Okay. Cheryl, you've got 36 months. The deadline is looming. Here's what you need to do. That first month I said, I need a financial advisor. I went to my financial advisor. I said, okay, I want to leave my job in 36 months. What do I need to do? So wow. she gave me a plan for all the things I needed to do to financially get my house in order so wow. that I could feel comfortable making that leap. And that that in and of itself gave me a lot of inner peace because most of the stress was related to finances. Sure. Sure. Because you were already working and you were already succeeding as a designer. You weren't the, the stress wasn't wondering, could you right. design or would you have clients? The stress yeah. was, would you replace that full-time salary right. and still be able to, you know, go to a movie once in a while? <laughs> right. right. So she put together a, kind of a, a plan of attack that coincided with my exit strategy. Okay. So that was number one. Um, number two, I knew, okay, it's one thing for this to be my side hustle and for me to have a, a website and the blog and all of that, but I'm going to need to up the ante if I'm going to do this full time. So I started to make those investments. Um, at the at that point, I was using my blog site as kind of my website, but around year, um, probably 24 month mark, I established um, a web designer mm. who started to put together the website. Right. Because now I've got projects that I feel like, okay, warrant a little bigger of an investment. So, um, And what you're saying is because you are working full-time and you are now working full-time as a designer, let's be real, you invested in paying somebody to build you a professional website. Okay, yep, I understand. Yep. Mm -hmm. I also started to, okay, I had processes and, and, you know, welcome packets, but I, I had built them myself. 
because this was my side hustle, right? right? Right. So I said I took those to the graphic designer and I said, you know what? I need these to look a little bit more professional. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, sure, no problem. Mm-hmm. So I started to make those investments, knowing that I've got 36 months, you know, 24 months, 12, 18 <laughs> months, <laughs> 12 months. It's and it just, at all that while I was preparing for D Day. I love it. I love it. Instead of just like going along and saying, okay, project 36 in three years from now, I'm going to leave my full-time job. And then on day one of the 37th month, be like, I need a professional website. I need professional. Mm -hmm. You, Mm -hmm. you were Mm -hmm. getting everything just like you were working on the side and building your portfolio and building your expertise and building your clients. You were building the professional side of your marketing and your branding and investing in it all along instead of waiting until you know day one of the design full-time firm very smart right right and I just like I created the pomp and circumstance behind um me launching the blog I created that same kind of buzz about me transitioning yeah to full-time because I wanted everybody to know right right? because now I no longer have that now you really are (laughs) right Right? I've got to to get some clients that's it that's it oh my goodness and so what sorts of things did you do to create that launch for your new business well, I was always very transparent about the fact that I this was my side hustle. Mm-hmm. And so um, I started after, after I told my parents the news, <laughs> <laughs> I published a, um, kind of a series about my transition. So I told I told my readership, I shared on social media um, that I'm, I'm leaving my job at the end of the year. And these are the things that I've done up until this point to get me ready. So I essentially had a blog series around that transition. And so everyone knew, everyone knew on January 1st, 2017, that I was going full time. And so that just, you know, that helped to build some of the, the, um, the talk. In fact, I had a news appearance at the beginning of last year as a result of me sharing that story. No way. The local reporters who follows me on Instagram reached out and said, I love your story. So proud of the jump that you're making. Congratulations. We'd love to have you on the show. But it was because I shared. I was transparent. I shared that. That's crazy. Now, what about the current job? I mean, obviously that, that you had to have gone to them and they, I mean, how did, how did you, do, how did you do that? <laughs> they, they knew I, I'm, I'm just really, I'm not good at keeping secrets right. and I just want, I want to be up for, so they've all, they had always known that I had a little business on the side. I sure. never really talked a lot about it, right. but it wasn't a secret that I like to decorate. Right, <laughs> you know, right, 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 right. Right. Her Your hobby. office was prettier than everybody else's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, at at the three month mark, because I had a management position and I, you know, I wanted to be respectful. I knew they would probably want me to help hire the next person and train them. So at three months, I gave them a, a 90 day notice. Okay. Um, I, I was asked to stay a little longer than that, but I was. I told really- the whole world I'm leaving. I can't. <laughs> I, I just I couldn't um but yes they knew at the three month mark okay. that I was yeah, so you didn't have so to worry was, about six months before putting it on social media they're not in your circles I, I did not add, put it on at six months I put it on oh. at three months oh, at three so months. that also tied into the timeline at work okay okay all right yeah. well I mean I guess everybody will be different in that regard some people will give notice I mean Kimberly was telling me one time she gave two week notice at a job it wasn't a big management position they were like no you could walk out now and she was like what (laughs) like you know like I'm happy to do the two weeks now goodbye Mm -hmm. take your little pencil Mm -hmm. holder and go Mm -hmm. you know what I mean so there's all different people are going to deal with different scenarios so it might be hard to do a big launch if you're where you're getting your bread and butter is not going to be amenable to you leaving uh, in that way okay so you know don't just run out and do all that if you can (laughs) so Okay. So, um, did you have any sort of criteria in addition to all of these things? I think these are are outstanding and so well thought out. Did you have any criteria as far as minimum number of projects going on or minimum number of minimum net earnings from your business, or you just were between the the work that you had done with the financial planner, you knew that you were going to have bills paid and mm-hmm. that you were going to have to work hard, but you weren't like 
you didn't need your design business to fund your lifestyle for how many months? Let's put it that way. Yeah. So I had about a six month cushion. Okay. Head start. Head start. Okay. Yeah. So, and that was, that was what her focus was, Mm -hmm. um, my financial planner. She's like, okay, so if you're making this leap, I want you to be able to stand on your own feet without having to worry about what your business is bringing in for about six months. Okay. That's smart. That's smart because you, and, know you need and, that time yeah, to dig so you in. Yeah, you get a run. You get a really good running start. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think if you try and establish, a, you know, this is just my personal opinion, a net income, or I need this many, you can analyze that to death. Mm. <laughs> I feel like I had at that point created enough demand, had enough clients in the pipeline. I had been recording the the uh, number of contacts I had each month for about two years. So I knew kind of the flow of business. Um, and I knew that people weren't going to all of a sudden just stop calling. Right. right. I mean, I was getting better with every project. Sure. So it just didn't logically make sense to assume that now that I've made this leap, no one's going to. Right. That the phone like is going to get disconnected. Right. Exactly. No, I love it. I think it's so Sorry. smart that you handled it. So, it, well, look, it is the basis for every successful interior design firm that the business end of it is well attended and cared to. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's yep. just the bottom line. It does yes. whether you're, you know, making a transition, you're starting out the gate from scratch, you're working with another firm and planning your own firm, you know, in the future. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's it's all of those things. And I can see how having the 6-month personal finances accounted for you know, cause I often yeah. say it's, I, I often have said on the podcast, well, maybe not so often. I've mentioned a couple of times how I like in our business, how I am not responsible for the day to day overseeing of our finances. Mm-hmm. And I joke about why I like it because I can't add and subtract to save my life. Okay. That's the <laughs> joke. Okay. But the reality of it when I'm not joking and when I'm very, being very serious is because I'm a a much more powerful salesperson because I'm never selling from need. Yeah. You see, I know that is a very real thing. I am never looking at the checkbook on Monday and going, Oh my goodness, are we going to bake that payroll nut on Friday? Okay. And because you know what, our business is very successful and it's very mature, but there are ebbs and flows. January, February is a very difficult month for all of us in this industry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not that we're going to go out of business, but there's weeks where I know my husband will look at me and he go, you have anything coming in this week? I'm like, I need to make payroll or I, you know, this, Uh this Uh payment is due or whatever. And he's like, he's crazy. He's always like scared the other way. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And that's good. And that's valuable too. But I know that it's very powerful for me to not have that day to day because selling from need is you are at a disadvantage. And the whole thing about sales is to either be even keel or just have a little edge on the other Uh guy. You know what I mean? And so, because I did run the business at one point um, back in the early nineties where I had to do sales and the management. And it's, it's a head trip to know that you have bills to be paid and you're like on a sales appointment, you know, a, a potential client, you're on a consultation and you can't be on your consultation thinking, I need to get this deposit. Yeah, I need to yeah, get this letter right, of agreement. Right, you have to be yeah. on the consultation thinking, what can I do for this person? How can I make their life better? How can I make this room prettier? You know? Exactly. exactly. Right. So knowing that you had six months of your, all of your expenses paid enabled you to just mm-hmm. step yeah. into it. Right? Yes. Yes. I Indeed. love it. I love it a lot. That's really awesome. Okay. So talk to me a little bit now about uh, your relationship with Rashida. And just to remind everybody, Rashida um, what, Rashida Gray is the principal of Gray Space Interior Design. She was on the show. You know the episode. Was that 267? 267. Yep. Mm-hmm. She was on episode 267. I met her at the Kravitz showroom in Philadelphia this past uh, spring. September 2017 and she just impressed me right off the bat I'm gonna tell you what that's a oh she is she's (laughs) smart and she's well spoken and you know we're standing there chatting and she's telling me about her business and this and that and she's listens to the podcast and blah 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 and then all of a sudden I'm like you know how many years are you in business and she's like oh I have a full-time job and I'm like I'm like and you have that many (laughs) like you know 18 clients in your pipeline Uh or whatever Uh it was I was Uh like oh no here 
here, here's my card. You got to get on my show. <laughs> right. And right. so, and then I found out that you guys, um, you know, that she reached out. Just tell us a little bit about the relationship and why in the middle of, you know, everything that you're doing <laughs> that you agreed to have a mentor mentee relationship. That's, that's a really amazing gift to give somebody, Cheryl. Yeah. So, um, my last role in the corporate environment was in diversity and inclusion. And so we managed things like mentoring. So it does, it, it is important to me personally. And I know I've seen the value of it, particularly in a corporate setting. Okay. And so I, I do receive a lot of requests from individuals about wanting, you know, seeking a mentor. Yes. However, Rashida reached out. Uh, I want to say maybe toward the end of 2016, I know I was still working full time and she had the most compelling, first of all, I could just, I could sense her heart Aww. in the, in the um, email that she sent to me. Mm. Um, but she also was really prescriptive about what she was looking for from me. See, that's so key, isn't it? Yes. She did not say, Hey, I love you. I've been following you. <laughs> you know, I have a, a part. I mean, I work full time too, and I'm doing design on the side. I'd love for you to be my mentor. Right. Like, hello, open ended. Like, what does that mean? What every day, every, mean? Ma every month, every minute, like <laughs> right, speed right. dial. Like, what is yes. that? You're crazy stalker. What are we doing? Right. <laughs> yeah. So she said all of those things, but she also said, you know, I've been on, I've been reading your story. Um, I, I see these parallels between what, what you've done and what I'm trying to do. I would love to eat, have an initial call with you for about 30 minutes to talk through some of the the things, questions that I'd love to ask you. And perhaps, you know, if, if we hit it off, maybe you'd be open to being my mentor. I see something that is completely run lead led by me. Um, maybe a monthly call for an hour each month. I mean, she lists like literally oh, listed smart. it out. Like, She's well, smart well. kid. Yeah. Okay. I could probably do that. <laughs> well, you know, you she know. took all the, the anxiety of what the heck does she want from me mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because nobody will look, nobody wants to disappoint somebody. You, we all probably have the part of us that would love to help somebody, but right. there's also that part like, well, how much help and how much time? And then I don't want to be the jerk that says, I said, yes, but this is now crazy and I can't handle it. Right. 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 And, and I think it's important. What was, what she did that was really important was she said she would drive it. Mm -hmm. So that took then the pressure. Cause you, sometimes you think mentor yes. and I think, Oh shoot, that's more work for me. Right. Now I got to hold you accountable. Gotta... And... <laughs> right, right. Oh, what did you do this week? Did you write your blog? Like I'm not exactly. your mother, right? <laughs> exactly. She said, no, I will drive this. I will come to you with a list of questions and concerns for your advisement. That's I'm, well, I mean, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's awesome. pretty doable. That's it. That's so, and, and even still, even with all that clarity and with all of the well-stated parameters, it's still a really amazing gift for you to do yeah. that. I mean, it really, well, I love it. yeah. I, we, we still have a monthly call. Um, we usually run over time because we're both <laughs> kind of chatty, but she comes, she still comes with an agenda. Right. And it so she hasn't. Half in. Right. See, that's what's really cool, too, because I didn't know that part of it. So 18 months in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she still respects yes. the relationship, yeah. even though I'm sure you are well beyond feeling like friends now. Yeah. But she doesn't right. just get on the phone and say, no. oh, yeah, I just missed you all week and let's just talk. No, she does not. Uh, and every now and then something key. will come up and but she's, she will always be like, do you have time today? I got a quick question I'd like to, to ask. Sometimes I have to tell her, okay, I mean, you can have an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's okay if we run over. I yeah. mean, <laughs> yes. but I love that she's so organized and prepared mm -hmm. and um, it's just, it makes our time together that much more valuable. Mm -hmm. I just think it's the way you should approach mentoring. Yeah. Well, Especially I mean, more formal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the thing about it is, is look, I mean, I, I do one on one coaching and that's the same thing that I asked them to do. I said, you know what? Send me a day or two. Your, 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 the things that you want to cover, you know, so I can give it some thought and this and that and the other thing. And also so that there's direction so that yep. we start yep. the conversation yep. with, look, it's one hour you're paying for it. Mm -hmm. Let's get something mm -hmm. done. And, but to think that this is a, 
you know, re- a relationship agreement and it's this yeah. many months later and she still shows you yeah. the respect by coming with the list each time. That's that. I just love her even more now. I'm just saying. Yeah. I it's really it's just great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's valuable. It's very valuable that, that the way she handles it and that you, um, ha- you know, were that made it so that you could say yes, you know. Yes. So. Right. And then I would think, you know, you've, I'm sure you've gotten something out of it as well, right? I was just about to oh. say, quite frankly, she has so much energy and I thought I was energetic. She has so much energy and is always trying something new that sometimes I'm like, oh, well, um, I probably should be doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, that's like me with the podcast. It's, there's a lot of it that I know and I've been through, but every single interview I learned something new it's like yes. wow that's so exciting <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that and it, yeah. it's fun it's really it's really cool when you have the opportunity to have your eyes spread wide open by somebody who is ahead of you behind you next to you on the experience path but has a completely different path so therefore yeah. it has no bearing if they're in business right. one year or 30 years there right. there's a way to learn from some I've learned from people every single episode it's so and it good. is so it is so rewarding when she comes up against something that I've already dealt with mm. and she's she's tossing around a solution and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have been this is what you you don't want to do. And here's That's why. Right. That is so I mean, I think about how much time and oh. energy and heartache I'm saving her in yes. those instances. That that too is the reward. Yes. You yes. know, to, like it's fun. It's fun when you hang up that call and you feel right. like you really did cut, you know, create a little uh, shortcut for her with that, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very excellent. I love it. It's excellent. Anything else that you want to share in regard to the, do you have a mentor that you've worked with, Cheryl? I, I do. Mm-hmm. I actually do. Um, I met the person who mentors me and we're, we're friends as well, okay. but I have a similar relationship with the designer in Dallas, uh, Ruthie Stalson. Oh, um, yes. You I, know, Ruthie? Yes. 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 I we always see at, you guys. Yeah, as, with, mm-hmm. yeah. I always see you guys together in social media and I did meet Ruthie in person, but I didn't realize she was your mentor. Yes, she is. Oh, so I, I so met her Ruthie. though at the design bloggers conference that first year. Oh. We sat on the first row together and, um, you know, she just, we clicked on a personal level and she's been in business for um, at least a decade, I'm sure maybe 15 years. And she really is just a little bit, she's ahead of me. And so I realized really early on that, hey, you've probably been down this road. What do you suggest here? So we have that, that type of relationship as well. And she provides um, a lot of value for me. Isn't that nice? That's great. Ruthie's great too. Yeah, definitely. It's such a small world. That's so funny. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and it's interesting. So this is what describing now is the value of, um, establishing a relationship, a connection with somebody who's ahead of you in business. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is so funny because our, our mastermind is launching actually the day we're recording is the day the mastermind is launching. And these are going to be a group of women that are in similar place in business where maybe individually one could have been a mentor for another, but for the most part, they're in a similar place Mm -hmm. in business. Mm -hmm. And I really, my greatest hope is that at the end of the mastermind that some of these people that are in it find a designer bestie that they can now go from the mastermind when it long after it ends and meet once a month by telephone or by Skype or, you know, by Zoom or something and be that what you're saying, like, how did you do this? And did you right. ever happen? Right. So right. it's yep. one of the components that, you know, get, you get a lot of real time advantage of being in the mastermind. But I, I hope that some friendships and relationships are built in, in, in between here so that they have that, that help that, you know, yeah. like so many designers tell me that, they feel alone, that they feel like they're doing this alone. I mean, it obviously, when, you know, the ones that are in the big firms, that's not the case, but the solos right. sort right. of feel like, and you know, what's funny is, you know, I live 13 miles outside of New York City. So even a solo here has so many opportunities yeah. Yeah. to right. meet with others. But, you know, when I interview some of these designers that are in rural areas yeah. and it's yeah. like, wow, you actually really are alone. 
Right. <laughs> you know? Right. So, uh, you know, so it's challenging and it's frustrating and it's nice to be able to talk with somebody that's like you said, can just say, uh, uh-uh, uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you why too. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, that's awesome. I love it. I, I'll tell you what, are you going out to design bloggers again this year, Cheryl? I am. I'm you actually going to be representing um, the brand that I'm now the brand ambassador for. Oh, Revolution tell me Fabrics. about that. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that. So um, at the end of last year, I was approached by a company uh, actually fairly local there in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, which is about 30 miles outside of Charlotte. Um, family owned company. They make performance fabrics. Um, they do so in a chemical free way. And um, it's, yeah, they make beautiful fabrics that are affordable um, and they're made right here in North Carolina. And so they approached me about helping to spread the word about their product. Um, they've actually been in business since the 60s, but they really have only recently started selling to the public and to designers. And oh. so they're, yeah. What so did they sell to like furniture manufacturers? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so um, I've signed on to kind of help you know, get the word out about revolution and we'll, we'll be attending the design bloggers conference and exhibiting there. Oh, so you're going to have a, a, a vendor booth there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how exciting. That's oh. interesting. Okay. So, um, so they found you through your social media. I did. Mm. <laughs> and they picked you because you're local to them and they thought it could be a more uh, enriching relationship, a local girl, you know, representing and, and, and being a brand ambassador for a local company. And tell us about well, that. Well, I think it was it was a little bit more organic than that. Oh. I, they were they had launched their new designer program. They reached out, I'm told, to a number of local designers to come to visit them at the plant to see how their fabric is made, to do mm. a tour. I had just left my job, you know, had a little bit more free time and decided, oh, that sounds like, you know, a great way to spend an afternoon. I'm going <laughs> to, you know, drive down to the plant and see how the fabric is made. So I went and met um, the CEO and, and um, you know, saw the fabric in production, um, you know, talked to the team. We just, we, we kind of hit it off. So, of course, I became a customer. I started to use their their product in my um, design projects and, of course, photographing them, pu- putting them online, tagging them. Wow. Um, and a few months later, <laughs> they asked me to lunch uh, and said, you know, we really like, we like your brand. We feel yeah. like it's in line with ours. Uh, we like that you work with more budget conscious clientele and families, and we would love to partner with you so you could help us grow and we could help you grow. Unreal. Whoa. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's really something. So that's, that's really, you know what, because that goes back to your intentional, we didn't even go into your social media campaign and how you built your social media following, but that yeah. goes back to being intentional and not just, you know, flipping up pictures yeah. and not worrying about yeah. it, but tagging the different, I tell people all the time, I mean, Kravit has the hashtag Insta Kravit, yep. and yep. I can't tell you it's so often how I will see in the feed, somebody will actually say, oh, I love, you know, using this Kravit fabric. And I'll be like, where's your hashtag Instagram? <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and you the thing is, it. you know, for me, it's like, I don't get any points for doing this. You know what I mean? But you might get hey. some points for yes. doing it. And Kravit, they're not going to repost every single person that did it, does it. They have 34,000 followers, but right. you might be the one that they Could repost, the you know? And, <laughs> and if you create Create a scenario where you are continuing to show loyalty to them yes. just the way yes. you were continuing to show loyalty to Revolution Fabrics. That's yep. amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, a little harder to get in inside Kravitz wheelhouse there yeah, right, at this point. Right. I mean, they have Candace Olsen and Barkley Butera. Right, but, sure, you sure. know, the point is the same, though. And I always make the point that I don't care how big a company you are. Everybody likes a little love. So sure. if you're going to do it, hashtag the Instacrat it. Just... <laughs> so in this case, you intentionally, well, that's very nice because they also made an impression on you by inviting you down and having met everybody. It, it They were top of mind for you. And so then yes. you kept it that way and now it reciprocated. That's awesome. Yes. I love it. Oh, my goodness. That's so great. Great, great, great. Another, it's just, I love these ideas. <laughs> I know. I know. 
Yeah, it's you, cool. social media is the best money you'll never spend on marketing. Ah, I, I, that's a great line. The best money you'll never spend. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's hours and hours, though. It's it's a time yeah, well, suck. Right. It's time. It's the truth. <laughs> it's, it's, that it is. It's like, oh, okay. I mean, it, it's literally, you have, to, you have to put time aside to do it. And I have to tell you, I would have very, not very little, I would have less gas. I would have less gas for the time that it takes to do it except for two things number one i truly love feeling like i know the different people that are always interacting right so i really do feel like i know them right but the second thing is from a more practical standpoint after having talked to amber lewis on her episode Mm -hmm. and um shay mcgee on both of Mm -hmm. the episodes that she was on when you realize the sheer yeah. number of hours yeah. that they have put in. This is not something like, I mean, Che McGee said that in the first three years, she might have not been on Instagram a total of five times. Now, she has two children that were born in that period right. of time. So let's just right. say two of those times were the birthdays, <laughs> the actual birth dates, not birthdays, but the birthing days. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, so it's like, and I'm like, because I actually thought about that one day. I was really very tired the end of the day and I hadn't gone in all day and talked to anybody and I opened up the thing and it was like, you know, 70, you know, notifications uh-huh, or something. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. so, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm doing a happy dance. I'm so happy yeah, that sure. 70 people are interested yes. in talking to me. Absolutely. But I looked at it and I thought, oh my God, Shay opens uh, this up and has like 5,000. Oh <laughs> you got to be yeah, kidding it, me. It, it can be daunting, but the payoff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the payoff can be huge. That's it. That's it. It's just like everything. It's work. It's a job. That's yeah. that's why it's a yep. job, you know? Right. So it, I think we're lucky because a lot of it is fun along the way, these yes. relationships, right? Yes. So. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, I love it. I think it's so awesome. And I will not be at Design Bloggers this year, but I maybe and hopefully I'll run into you at one of the other markets over the course yeah. of the year. Be uh, fun to sit down and chat with you in person again. So, But I Absolutely. really thank you so much, Cheryl, for coming on. You shared great, great, great advice on the mentor-mentee relationship and also the criteria and the ways to think about and set yourself up for success when you move from your full-time business to your side hustle. So thank you so much. Thank you, Luann, so much for having me. All righty. I have a few takeaways. You probably have your own, but I'm going to point out the things that really struck me. The first is you have to follow your dreams, right? You have to keep working towards what you know in your heart you're meant to do. So if you are working for another interior designer right now and you're dreaming one day of owning your own firm, or maybe you're still working another job and doing your interior design on the side, just the way Cheryl was and the way Rashida is. So you've got to follow your dreams. You have to make a plan so that you can get to them. And this brings me to the second takeaway. And this was the big one for Cheryl. I noticed in her conversation that she She does almost everything with a plan. She's very intentional. It's no wonder that she's successful. So the first thing that I noticed is way back when she started her blog, she didn't just throw it up there and wait for the world to show up like a lot of us do. Hello, guilty, all right? No, she created an entire launch. She created buzz. She told everyone in her personal circle about it. She had a countdown. And guess what? When she when she did finally launch it, there were people there to listen to it. Oh, hello. She marketed it. <laughs> she made a plan. I don't know. Sometimes things are just so obvious and then you don't notice and you don't think about them, right? But who would do that for a blog? But how well it paid off for her. So smart. The other thing is that she planned her exit from her corporate job. She made a detailed roadmap that she created with the help of of a financial planner. And once she identified what she needed to leave, she planned and she worked toward it. And it took her three years, but it was charted and it happened. And I remember Sandra Funk of House of Funk said it in one of the conversations that I had with her on the podcast, what gets tracked gets done. That's a great statement. When, when Sandra said that, I was like, stop dead in my tracks on that. And when Cheryl was talking, it, I thought of that. I thought, you know what? She plans it, she tracks it, and she gets it done. 
Okay. The other thing that she plans is her mentee mentor relationships. Of course, by now, both Rashida of Gray Space Interiors and Ruthie of Ruthie Stolson Interiors are her friends. I'm certain of it. I know that they're her girlfriends by now. But the mentor mentee relationship continues and it is beneficial to all of them because it still is planned and it respects the process. Just like you have to do in your business, you have to plan, you have to build process processes and you have to run your systems. They're not something that you do for just a few months or for a while until you get comfortable or until you think you've got it. No, you have to be in them all the time. To be successful, you must always plan. You must always be in your systems and you must always respect the process. This is how you cultivate success, how you create success and how you maintain it. And Cheryl is a living example of this. And I just love all of the lessons that we learned from her today absolutely a slam dunk. All righty. I want to say, uh, first of all, I just want to mention that there's a lot of iTunes reviews coming in. And the last two, one is from Lemongrass Interiors, Interiors, that's Jessica in Florida, and Sarah Lynn Brennan from North Carolina. So thank you, ladies, for your reviews. I'm so grateful for them. All righty. Now, who's coming to the birthday party at LaFroy Brooks in New York City? The party is on February 21st. The re- RSVPs are pouring in. In. Some of the previous guests that have already RSVP that are coming are Sandra Funk, Darcy Heather, Marina Umali, um, Sarah from Chancellor Ray Designs. So these are all people that have been on the show and that you might want to meet. There's, you know, the, the, there's tons of listeners that are coming. Liza Jones is coming. So there's lots of people coming. Mimi's coming. Oh my goodness, Jenny Madden's coming. So I, it's really getting very, very exciting. So I hope you'll be there. Also, some of the execs from our our sponsor, Kravit, will be there. And of course, we're going to be in the gorgeous showroom of Lefroy Brooks. To RSVP to come to the party, go to www.luannigara.com slash party. All righty. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate that you take your time to listen to the show. I appreciate when you share your opinions and your comments with me through Facebook and Instagram and by email. And before I go, I just want to ask you, are you in a full-time job now and you want to be a full-time interior designer? Are you inspired by what Cheryl has done and what Rashida is working towards and so what so many of your colleagues are doing? I hope so. I hope you're writing things down and you're taking notes. But more than that, I hope you're making some moves, okay? So you've got your notes, you've got your notebook. What are you going to do? You have to make a plan, but you have to make a move, right? You have to decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.